Country okay. Kennel Club uh, train dog handler teams to identify little cherry disease. Let's, Let's find, find out! out. Little cherry disease is caused by one or more of three pathogens. Little cherry virus 1, little cherry virus 2, or Western X phytoplasma. I appreciate you guys volunteering for this program. It's a volunteer program. And congratulations to you guys for being chosen from those that volunteered. So. I wanting to make sure that we are doing everything the same for each dog under the same conditions. At this point, we're only going to practice in class. Tonight, we're just working with little cherry disease. I have a sample here. The lid has holes in it, and I have a jar with no holes. This was just now traded so that this has been sealed up until just this moment to let, the, uh, let it out. What we're going to start with is just the one with the sample. Each of you, in turn, Bring your dog out. The dog will watch me, or Mike, because we're going to split it up. Set the jar down, and, and then you want the dog to go and give, you want the dog to go to the odor. As soon as their nose touches it, you give your uh, keyword, I guess. So for this class, we want you to choose a different search word than you use in scent work or any other sport. Cherry. 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 Everybody like that one? Cherry will be your send out word. Yeah. Your search Here's word. what you're going to do. You're going to go cherry. Cherry. Oh, yeah. Get, get the marker word. Get the marker word. Yes. Good. Yes. Good girl. One more time. Yes! Good girl. There we go. Good job. Thank you. Nice girl. And that's what we want yeah. for the first step around. Cherry. Betsy Metcalf, this is Zenyatta, and uh, she is an 11th generation Rhodesian Ridgeback that I have bred, and she is a field champion, has scent work titles, advanced scent work titles, um, uh, rally, agility, excellent, and uh, what else was it? Uh, we're enjoying the uh, something new. And uh, she's a sight hound, but also traditionally they use their nose when they lose sight of things. Uh, she's kind of a methodical worker, but uh, seems to really enjoy uh, using her nose. Oh, she's got a tracking title also. So, again, using the nose. Um, I was a physical therapist uh, the last 20 years we were in the school district, working with special ed kids mostly, um, and other physical disabilities, and retired, and now teach agility and trekking. Oh, yes, had horses ever since 4-H uh, days in high school. Oh, and I also had a dog, too, at that time that I did obedience with. Oh, high school was here in Wenatchee. I uh, was born in Nebraska, but raised here in Wenatchee. <laughs> Yes. Yes. So we are discrimination between. Not yet. Nope. Same, same, same jar. Is 
go. Yeah, and these samples are from the same sample. Right. The same tree. Okay. and I've lived in this valley for most of my adult life. This is my dog Darby, who just turned three years old. He's a rescue border collie. Um, we have competed successfully in uh, scent work and agility, barn hunt, and he, we're just getting started, so he's doing really well. Um, I, I retired from a career in the Forest Service. I retired as data analyst. Uh, but I did a lot of mapping work for them. Before that, I was GIS analyst and then became data analyst. Uh, and I just have a lot of fun with dogs. This is my third uh, competition dog that I've had. And uh, it's a world of fun. Yeah. This is a third class session we've held. And our emphasis right now is to get the dogs really ingrained on getting to the diseased sample. So we've only been working with disease samples so far. Tara Barrett. This is Otter, the lab. Uh, I got Otter when I was living up in Anchorage in 2011, and I got her as a 10-week-old puppy. Um, and when I got her, uh, it started snowing a few weeks after I got her, so I started doing scent work in the house with her, because in 2011, that was the year that um, Anchorage had record snowfall. So we had 17 feet of snow at the house. <laughs> it was the kind of snow where you had to 
shovel out paths to walk, and so you really couldn't do anything outdoors. And so I started doing scent work with her. And I would hide treats in the house, and she would have to go and find them by using her nose. And so that's how we started doing, doing scent work. Um, I was interested in doing the uh, work we're doing here to see if dogs can detect uh, little cherry disease, because I'm actually a researcher with USDA. I, I have a PhD in forest management, and I work in forestry, and uh, they're using dogs a lot for detecting um, various types of forest diseases and insects, and so I was kind of interested in it anyway, so I decided to volunteer for this class. My name is Sue Edick, and this is my dog, Cubby. <laughs> He's an Intley Booker, and um, We've been doing um, scent work um, for like two years, and it's something that uh, Cubby really enjoys, and um, and he's been pretty good at it. And um, we were happy to be invited to the um, A class, and we're enjoying it. And uh, we're looking forward to, especially today, because today we're going to. It's going to be a real test because I believe we're going to have just the, we're going to have diseased um, branches and um, uh, clean branches. And so today we're going to determine if dogs can really tell the difference. I am semi-retired and um, I was uh, in affordable housing. I was worked for a nonprofit doing affordable housing. and. Um, my passion is doing dog stuff, and um, uh, I used to be a horse person, and now I just do dogs. <laughs> so we're going to have one with a couple, two or three jars. We're going to do a couple, two or three runs on it, and then we're going to bring in clean wood and just see how our dogs react. Yeah. <laughs> We are now introducing a jar with twigs that are not contaminated. Your dog doesn't know what we want him to do. Your dog has no idea that there is a difference between the two. So this first run, you want to be ready to treat quickly when they get to the right one, to the contaminated one, and which is the first one and then walk them on to the second one, let them smell it, and don't treat. It's going to take a number of times, but we want them to begin to try and figure out why they get treated at one and not the other. So to begin with, come in directly this side, up this direction, so we get the contaminated one first that they're accustomed to, but make sure they walk past the second one they can sniff it all they want, but you don't treat, you ignore it. If you have no interest in that second jar whatsoever. Good This side, one last time, 
when we're done. I'm Tia Smith. I'm an entomologist and ag consultant for Zirkle Fruit Company. I'm also a Washington Tree Fruit Research Commissioner and I chair the Apple Crop Protection Committee for the commission. Um, the industry is facing a widespread disease that has been um, around for many, many years and has wiped out other industries and it is known as the little cherry disease. Um, and we are trying to do everything we can to fight the disease and hopefully get ahead of it before it wipes out our industry. We are looking for all aspects of what we can do from um, AI technology to working with dogs that can detect the disease in the orchard or hopefully in the nursery eventually. So I have a master's in entomology that I obtained from Washington State University. Um, and then I'm also an agricultural consultant with Circle Fruit Companies and that I've kind of trained myself in, in just being there at Circle Fruit. We start off with four runs, four runs with two containers, one good, one bad. Right, with letting them smell the bat. Bad. Yeah. Oh. Smell the disease thing, just like you would the They need to, we need to make sure they're smelling a difference and know which one to go to. So this time we have two healthy samples out there and one disease.
my name is Linda McFarland. Um, I'm recently retired. Um, previously, I worked at the Washington Apple Commission, and we were involved in in pests for the apple industry. And then I also I retired from CMI Orchards, so I was very involved and interested in pests and, and these kinds of things to protect the cherry orchards because CMI Orchards was huge in the cherries. And um, then this is Angel. She is a five-year-old black German Shepherd. And she is very interested in scent work. She's very motivated. And so this has been a really fun experience for us. That was a good job. That'll be all we're going to do for today. That's 10 runs per dog. Now, in the coming weeks, you're going to think things are pretty repetitious. Because we're going to, you notice here, we ended up with two good wood and one diseased wood. And we're going to be doing that because we have got to get these dogs to, so that they'll be at least 90% positively starting to take off. It's just not Spanachi. There are people all over the country that are uh, very supportive of what we're doing here and they're doing it with different things across the country. So, and uh, one of the things is they're even talking, Texas Tech is talking about sending two students up here um, to do a dissertation and so forth and see what's going on at no charge to us. So. Oh, Jan Flatten. I am a uh, instructor here at the Wenatchee Kennel Club in agility and also in scent work. This is Aspen. She um, is from Aussie Rescue. She was rescued in Texas and uh, found wandering on the streets of Texas. And uh, because I'm the Pacific Northwest Regional Rep for Aussie Rescue, we flew her up here to be adopted and we failed on on fostering her and she stayed with us so um, she's an Australian Shepherd and <laughs> uh, the reason why I decided to get into this is um, in, into the ag class was 
that she was showing a lot of aptitude for scent work. She's only been in three scent work trials and she has her, um, her novice scent work title which includes all four different elements of scent work and then she also has her advanced containers title and that was just in three trials that she went to. So um, she just shows a lot of aptitude for it. She doesn't show a lot of aptitude for agility, unfortunately, which is my, my first love. So, but every dog is different and every dog has different qualities. And so she gets to decide what, what she likes and she really likes this. So I'm excited to be part of this and maybe help develop a program for the community that they can uh, figure out these diseases using using their own dogs by us doing a proof of concept um, program here with Wenatchee Kennel Club. Yeah, I'm a retired environmental coordinator for the Forest Service. So I um, I worked on the National Vol Environmental Policy Act documents and uh, appeals and litigation for the Forest Service. So I live in Cashmere, Washington. So I live in a community that is 16 houses surrounded by orchards. So I think it's important for this community to be able to help with, um, with these diseases to see if we can help solve the problem. Uh, today we're doing basically what we've been doing. We want to get these dogs every chance we can to learn to go only and directly to the hot one. So we just keep practicing the same thing. My observation is every one of them is noticing something different on the positive box. They still have different ways that they're showing and different ways of searching, but they're all showing some definite action on the hot box. So I think we have accomplished a lot in this one session. Uh, I'm very pleased with what we have and I think next session We'll have more information for us on how to proceed and refine what they're doing.